On October 27th, 2013, National Geographic aired a docudrama entitled American Blackout. It simulated what would happen to our country, its economy, and its people if a cyber attack shut down the nation's electric power distribution system known as the grid. As the movie makes clear, in just 10 days, hundreds of thousands lost their lives, vast destruction of property occurred, and societal breakdown was underway. Is such an horrific scenario a real possibility? Could the grid, in fact, be taken down in other ways that would deny the nation electrical power for far longer than 10 days? If so, what would be the consequences? R. James Woolsey was the director of Central Intelligence under President Clinton. We have 18 critical infrastructures in the United States, food, water, and so on. Electricity is the one that all 17 of the others depend on. So if the electric grid goes, uh, it is an absolute catastrophe uh, for society unless the outage is uh, very, very brief. Uh, we have uh, found, really, in studying this, that if the grid goes down, we are not all uh, back uh, in the uh, 1980s pre-web. We are back in the 1880s pre-electric grid, and very few of us have uh, enough uh, plow horses or anything else that we would need uh, to get by. An attack on the grid uh, is entirely possible with simple weapons uh, such as rifles. It's also possible to take uh, out uh, the electric grid by an electromagnetic pulse that would uh, emanate from even a simple and uh, low-yield uh, nuclear weapon. One detonated at, uh, say, the altitude of about 20 miles. All one has to do is get up to about 20 miles, and uh, the detonation of a nuclear weapon there uh, could take out many, many share transformers and a huge share of the electric grid, perhaps as much as two-thirds, uh, killing through food and water shortages and all the rest, uh, millions of, of people. Uh, these possibilities exist. They are not being effectively dealt with or effectively uh, 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 coped with in any fashion by the uh, uh, electrical system that we have uh, in place today. Uh, the grid is a disaster waiting to happen. The higher the altitude, the greater the area of the United States that could be subjected to devastating levels of electromagnetic energy. Particularly susceptible to damage or destruction are the nation's inventory of high voltage transformers that make up the backbone of the grid and the critical infrastructures that depend on it. Claire Lopez was a career CIA officer. She's a nationally recognized expert on Iran and the threats that it and its North Korean allies pose to the United States. Uh, and we know that the Iranians, for instance, have practiced the launch um, of a Scud missile uh, from the deck of a fishing trawler. Uh, this has been observed um, some time ago in the Caspian Sea. There's no reason why a similar kind of a vessel would not be able to get close to our borders off territorial waters uh, with such a threat. So I think we have to take very seriously the threats that come to us from the Iranian regime, uh, as well as from the North Korean regime. Uh, they have the ability, they have uh, the intent, and they are working together uh, very, very hard on bringing this threat uh, to completion uh, to have a deliverable uh, nuclear um, weapons threat um, against the United States. And so I think the, the, the catastrophic consequences that could occur um, were an EMP, an electromagnetic pulse weapon, to uh, be detonated over the United States. I think that must be taken very seriously in terms of these two potential adversaries of the United States. In addition to such man-caused disasters, the grid must be able to contend with naturally occurring geomagnetic disturbances caused by massive solar flares. Every 100 years or so, they precipitate dangerous space weather, disrupting the Earth's magnetosphere and creating effects similar to EMP. The last super solar storm, known as a Carrington event, occurred in 1859. 154 years ago. It caused widespread fires to destroy telegraph wires and offices. As Maine State Representative Andrea Bolin notes, even a much smaller storm can be 
devastating. In 1989, our neighbor to the north, Quebec, Canada, had had a solar storm of just a medium size magnitude that took down their entire grid in 92 seconds. Despite such previous disruptions, many remain unaware of the danger intense electromagnetic pulses represent to today's grid. Michael Del Rosso is an engineer who formerly chaired the leading Electric Engineering Association's Critical Infrastructure Protection Committee. I, I uh, dealt in my committee with a number of people with PhDs in electrical engineering who had worked 30 plus years in the power industry even though they knew Maxwell's equation, they understood the systems they worked with from a very technical and scientific level, they didn't understand the phenomenon of EMP. And part of that could be done, uh, attributed to the fact that uh, the, our knowledge of EMP phenomenon, even though it goes back 50 years, was generally very classified. So it was not until the uh, EMP Commission's Critical Infrastructure Report of 2008 that we published uh, some of the more disconcerting facts about what to expect. And those facts were not just assumptions, we conducted uh, uh, actual simulations and tests and, and EMP simulators to destruction of devices and uh, had some of the best minds in America uh, running these tests on uh, uh, exemplar equipment. And we realized that there really was uh, far uh, reaching implications to the critical infrastructure and in bringing down these systems of systems that we rely upon. And uh, in fact, uh, Dr. Bill Radaski, who's one of the leading experts on the phenomenon, and also remediating uh, critical infrastructure to the phenomenon, uh, actually came out to address uh, my committee in 2008. And once he explained from firsthand knowledge uh, what actually is involved, they realized that in fact um, uh, they didn't, uh, they, they were mistaken that in fact the infrastructure really was vulnerable. And those human uh, psychological uh, facets that make us want to reject that because it's something that came out of the blue and we're not familiar with it, uh, I think are taking place in the industry in general. They just don't understand uh, that uh, what we take for granted and have taken for granted for over 100 years, the electrical and electronic infrastructure of America really is fragile. There really are phenomenons, both natural and man-made, that can uh, irreversibly damage them. And that if you look at the logistics on how to restore them, uh, there is no real opportunity for restoration because the time required would, be, uh, would take so long. Uh, I know recently um, uh, Jim Woolsey was talking to a former governor of a state who didn't, uh, uh, who questioned uh, whether there really would be 90% casualties as a possibility of a large EMP attack across the United States in the first 12 to 18 months. And uh, we went back and pulled out the uh, uh, applicable testimonies to both the House and the Senate by uh, people like Dr. William Graham, who uh, was uh, the commissioner of the EMP Commission and chaired it, uh, and uh, the, the evidence uh, spoke for itself. So this is a phenomenon that uh, I, everyone should actually investigate. Uh, it's that we're a nation of a $16 trillion economy, and the cost uh, is insignificant uh, to remediate. Uh, and we, we surely have the wealth to do it, and we should have the resolve to do it, because uh, we the uh, the doctrines of adversarial nations include an EMP attack as, a, as a, a, a tactic to be used against us, and the United States is inexcusable not to be defended against it. Air Force Major General Robert Newman was the Adjutant General of Virginia until May 2010. In that capacity, he was responsible for the Commonwealth's National Guard and the vital role it plays in contending with emergency situations. As a former adjutant general, I'm concerned about the effects of an electronic magnetic pulse event in Virginia, my home state, or throughout a region of the United States. I can tell you that the Guard, in response to any emergency, will certainly be one of the first on scene to render aid to our fellow citizens and to minimize any proper damage that could occur. But an electronic magnetic pulse event has a significantly higher level of, of danger than the normal emergencies and disasters that the Guard are traditionally used to responding to. We need to prepare, not only as a Guard in the state, but as a Guard and part of the whole community of first responders to be able to respond to an EMP event effectively. General Newman is hopeful that an upcoming exercise called Grid X2, conducted by the Electric Industry and the North American Electric Reliability Corporation in mid-November 2013, will help the Guard prepare for an EMP disruption to the grid. I'm looking forward to seeing the Grid X exercise 
to uh, fully flush out the requirements that will be necessary for the Guard and other first responders to uh, is, is establish a response capability and uh, methods of relief from the EMP event to ensure that our citizens are, are protected and our society continues on. Uh, the GRID-X exercise will be a valuable tool to enable us to find out the shortcomings that we have and to be able to resource and to train to those shortcomings so an effective response can be rendered. But will the electric industry's exercise actually demonstrate the GRID's vulnerabilities and the dire emergencies that might ensue if enemies of this country or even solar flares cause severe and lasting disruptions of the power supply? Maine State Representative Andrea Boland secured in June 2013 the enactment of legislation in her state designed to protect its part of the grid from EMP. And when I learned about this terrible threat that was facing our grid, I felt that I really needed to respond to it. It was so overwhelming to think that an extreme solar storm and one that is given a 100% probability of occurring could take down our entire grid and that of the rest of the United States for that matter and in fact the world. It was overwhelming to hear. But equally astonishing was the fact that there are protections that are available that could be used on our grid that our utilities were just ignoring. In fact they resisted for years all efforts to bring them forward. At the federal level, efforts have been going on for quite some time, and a number of government studies had been done. But nothing could seem to overtake the fact that we had a bizarre law that gave the industry the right to set the reliability standards and police themselves. Dr. Peter Pry is one of the nation's preeminent experts on the threat of electromagnetic pulse. He has served in the CIA, on the House Armed Services Committee, and on the staff of the Blue Ribbon Congressional EMP Threat Commission. Dr. Pry suggests standards for judging whether Grid X2 will actually be useful or simply an exercise designed to obscure the grid's grave vulnerabilities and postpone actions urgently needed to remedy them. And my expertise has been on weapons of mass destruction. And the threat that has always worried me the most throughout my career has been electromagnetic pulse, or EMP. I wanted to comment on the uh, upcoming exercise being conducted by the electric power industry, run by the North American Electric Reliability Corporation, or NERC, called GRIDX, which is going to simulate allegedly a worst case or really bad case scenario of an attack on the U.S. electric grid. Because I'm very concerned that the electric power industry and NERC have in the past got a bad track record about being unrealistic and too optimistic about the outcomes from a natural or nuclear EMP event or cyber attack on the grid. Uh, for one thing, they seem to fundamentally misunderstand the nature of a cyber threat to the grid because in foreign military doctrinal writings, cyber attack includes nuclear EMP attack. And this has been excluded from the calculations of the NERC and the preparations of the electric power industry to protect the American electric grid. Realistic scenarios, realistic war games have been played by the National Defense University and the U.S. Army War College that have incorporated EMP attack and in those scenarios, the consequences have been catastrophic, resulting in nationwide blackouts that last months or years uh, with industrial accidents that put at risk the lives of millions of Americans. So I think that we can come up with a kind of report card you know, for the impending NERC grid exercise to see how realistic it is. For example, you know, does the exercise entail a nationwide blackout that blacks out all 48 states or is it limited to a local uh, blackout that affects only in a particular region? If it's a local blackout or a regional blackout, then I'd say the grid X gets an F. How about the uh, number of people affected? You know, is it tens of millions of people that are affected by the blackout? Or is it the whole population of the United States, 310 million Americans? If it's a small number of people, then again, I'd grade them with an F. 
what about the collateral consequences from this? Does the blackout cause industrial accidents, nuclear power reactor meltdowns, and the expulsion from nuclear reactors of, of radioactivity, chemical fires, and uh, other kinds of industrial accidents uh, that would cause large numbers of casualties? If these things are absent from the exercise, then the grid X deserves an F. And finally, what about the population affected? Are lives actually lost in large numbers? Are, the, are people having difficulty getting food and water and the other necessaries to survive? Does the blackout last a protracted period so you actually have starvation as a consequence of the attack? If none of these things are uh, present, you know, if you don't have large casualties because we are currently so unprepared for this kind of a scenario, that again, the grid X is too optimistic and deserves an F. Finally, you know, I'd like to say that I find it strange that the electric power industry and NERC are focusing basically on playing games and doing exercises about a catastrophic cyber and EMP threat at this late date. There have been numerous U.S. government studies on this. I mentioned earlier there have already been major exercises, so we know that this is a serious threat. We know it's a threat that must be addressed. Instead of playing games and doing exercises, the NERC and the electric power industry should be doing what they're doing right now in the state of Maine. They should be implementing programs to try to protect the electric grid, as Maine is doing, so that the whole United States and the American people are protected from a catastrophic cyber or EMP attack. The time for playing games has long passed. What NERC and the electric power industry should be doing is engaged in actions, constructive actions, to actually protect National Electric Grid from EMP. Representative Trent Franks of Arizona has been a leader in raising the alarm about electromagnetic pulse in the U.S. Congress. He is co-chairman of its EMP caucus and has introduced bipartisan legislation in the House of Representatives requiring the electric industry to harden the grid against EMP effects. And there have now been five major federally funded studies uh, on this thing called EMP or electromagnetic pulse. And the danger that this phenomenon represents to us is that it could damage our national electric grid to the extent that we would lose power even for extended potential, potentially extended periods of time for even months or years. And in a worst case scenario, uh, the result could be so bad that our society would begin to tear itself apart uh, because of the uh, inability for us to function in a modern day world without electricity. And I am convinced that we need to respond and address this issue very dramatically because I believe that it represents the most significant short term national security threat that we face in America today. Fortunately, the issue can be mitigated. We can deal with the worst elements of it uh, by hardening our grid, by putting uh, apparatus on our electric grid that prevents uh, the worst damage from occurring to our major transformers and other critical components. And the time to do that is now because there is a, a moment in the life of every problem when it is big enough to be seen and still small enough to be solved. And I believe that you and I have uh, the responsibility uh, that comes with that moment that we're in and uh, that we need to work hard to make sure that we mitigate this threat so that our children and grandchildren and continue to walk in the light of freedom.